the cloud so we should be recording. So welcome everyone. We're here on our Family Business Friday Zoom at noon. We have uh, an amazing speaker today who's become a very, very good friend, Christian DeAndrea, the president of Soldier Fuel and founder of the shopfamily.org. So we're going to hear more about that. And, and for those that, that haven't been at these things, I'd like to start out with uh, saying a little bit about who we are and who's Rothman Institute. So our mission statement is to support, promote, and research entrepreneurship with a special focus on family and veteran businesses. We've, uh, we would not exist without uh, our, our wonderful sponsors, the TD Bank Charitable Foundation, Provident Bank, SunTrust, CIA and J. I think Tony Russo, the, the president, will be, be joining us a little later with possibly some updates from, from Trenton. Um, our programs, we've been around really 31 years. So we've had student entrepreneurship programs. We have a Family Business Alliance, which is a membership where we support family businesses. We have our Family Business Awards, 27. We're going on our 28th year. Christian is our keynote speaker who uh, will be giving an amazing, uh, an amazing presentation about what we're talking about today, family businesses and shopfamily.org. We, uh, our Veterans Launching Ventures program has gotten better than ever. It's now a national program with folks from eight, uh, eight different states. And we have a small business series where we, uh, we uh, talk to small businesses about issues that are critical to them. Um, this we're very, very, uh, very proud of. And, uh, and Christian, we're, we're actually probably gonna change. So this is our Family Business Week logo. Uh, with your okay, we'd like to do shopfamily.org at the bottom instead of shop family owned to really, and, and the whole idea of this thing is, is uh, uh, just like, and you'll talk about Shop Small, but on the fourth week of every October, we want people to identify and support family businesses. We want to do them all year round, but we want that special time to get people to support, you know, what is the backbone of the American economy and really the global economy. I have my show, Family Business World. Uh, uh, Christian was one of my recent guests. That'll be on our YouTube channel, which is uh, taped and where we're, we're, again, celebrating family businesses every Thursday at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. Uh, this Family Business Fridays, we've had, I think this is our 25th session. So we've had a number of these that will continue throughout the rest of the year. Our Veterans Launching Ventures Program, as I mentioned before, is, uh, has really become national because of the, the Zoom, the ability to do Zoom. This is our, um, our, our channel, the YouTube channel. So the Rothman Institute of Entrepreneurship. So just go to YouTube, look at the channel. This video will be there, our other ones are there. So if you've missed any of our things, we have about 130 different videos you'll find something that will be of value to you. Um, and our New Jersey Family Business of the Year Awards. This is where we're, we're focusing a lot of our time. October 21st, 2020 at 12 noon, everybody on this, on this webinar will get an invitation. Um, we will uh, have, as I said, Christian's the keynote. We have a number of other individuals. We will be going live with our award ceremony. We have three major awards that we're giving. Then afterwards, we have a VIP reception where uh, Christian will be part of that. But Tim Sullivan, the CEO of the Jersey Economic Development Authority, probably the most influential person when it comes to dealing with issues related to small business. And uh, Al Titone, who's the director of the US, the Federal US Small Business Administration, from a federal standpoint, these are the two most important people, one from the state standpoint, the other from the federal standpoint. So it'll be a, a, a real open discussion, not necessarily a, a presentation, but I know people have questions for them already. I had an opportunity to be part of the Jersey Restart Recovery Advisory Council for the governor uh, to really advise them on the reopening of businesses and to kind of push them to, uh, to do some things. And, and so this crisis, and those who've seen this before, I always want to bring this up because we talk about how horrible it was in 2009, 2010, where uh, unemployment, the record, I think the weekly record was 700,000. Now we've been in the millions largely because the unemployment is by small family and family businesses. And so we need to understand that this is where employment is. And you look at these numbers again, because these are small and family businesses. So we as individuals as a country need to really support small and family businesses. And so then we look at the, uh, the unemployment rate again, another, another chart talking about this unemployment. I like this chart because it really shows what the business landscape looks like. Small businesses under 100 employees are almost 70% of the, of, the, of, uh, of the businesses in the United States, 20% are medium size and only 10% are large businesses. The other thing that's really important, and we're going to be doing more in, uh, with uh, 
um, um, minority women veteran businesses is that these minority owned businesses are a critical component of the economy. And so these numbers, and I'm not gonna go through all of them, really talk about how significant businesses are with different minority firms and with veterans. But one of the interesting things is that when you look at the, um, the, the support of, of, of minority and, uh, and, and women, family, uh, veteran businesses, you find that when there is a certain number of businesses, there's actually greater parity, there's greater economic growth in the country. It's actually good for all of, the, all of America. So this is an initiative that's, that's critically important. So um, with that, the governor passed the budget. Um, you know, we were disappointed there wasn't more money for small and family businesses, but Tim Sullivan, who's the head of economic development, really gets it and really understands that and is doing what he can. So with that, I want to turn it over to Christian. And uh, Christian, you have a PowerPoint. You want me to... to uh... I do indeed. I can share my screen if you'd like. Dale, thank you yeah. for that great introduction. And I can dive in whenever you want me to. Yeah, please go. Uh, you should be able to share your screen. So... Uh... So the host has unfortunately disabled uh -oh. attendee screen okay. sharing. Well, let me do this. I'm going to make you the. Uh, I'm going to make you the host. I'm sure it's nothing personal, Bill. I won't take it no, personal. No, no. Well, you're now the host, so you can do whatever you want. Okay, so this should work here. Let's see. Let me know uh, if you're seeing what I'm seeing. Yes. Probably. Perfect. Okay, well, what I'll do is I will first just say again, thank you, Dale, for that introduction. I'm always astonished and I love your introductions maybe more than any other Zoom calls I do because I learn things. And number two, I'm humbled by your productivity. I think that I'm a buzzsaw, that I work 24 seven. And then whenever I listen to you and hear your introduction, you're up to something new. And I think Dale's outpacing me again. <laughs> <laughs> no. So you are a phenomenon of productivity and it's great to see what you're up to. You're doing important work as well. You're, you're fighting for the people who need a strong, smart voice like you. So it's greatly appreciated. Well, thank you. So what I wanted to do today is talk about this venture that you see on the screen, Shop Family, and the big picture, why I'm doing it, why we're doing it, Dale, you help out, you're a part of it, and why it's important. I think that a lot of folks who are probably tuned in right now are a custom with some of the fundamentals with respect to why family business matters. But it's always important to kind of refresh one's perspective on just how critical family businesses are. And then also there's a fun dimension to all of this, which is just how good family businesses are. Um, and I love walking through those. And so I'll just start with this presentation and we'll explore this world a bit together and what I'm doing what we're doing to help boost it uh, for both parties, both the businesses, family businesses. We want to boost family businesses because they're socially and culturally important. And number two, we want to boost a consumer customer experience because customers benefit and get higher quality goods and services when they shop at family businesses. That's the belief. So shop family and the tagline that I've come up with, which I really like is just to put it in perspective, Everyone knows about the shop local movement, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone knows about the shop small. So big organizations back the idea of shopping locally, which is hugely important. Shopping small, which is hugely important, especially this year with COVID having done a lot of damage. But what we're interested in is boosting this third idea in that trifecta of shopping family. Family is just as important as local, just as important as small. Oftentimes they co-mingle, of course, a lot of small local businesses are family businesses, but we like to shine an especially bright spotlight on family businesses. Okay, so what are we and how we're different? We boost family businesses, we boost engagement with family businesses, and we feature family businesses in terms of cultural phenomenology. We like to tell their stories and shine a light on them. The site is shopfamily.org. It's in beta launch, but it's live. And the things that we're doing as part of it are underway. And in this talk, I'm gonna show you some of the initial results on what we've been doing with respect to boosting engagement for family businesses. And it's pretty exciting. So here's a quick screenshot of the Shop Family page. You get a sense for what we do. But that tagline at the bottom is important. We're an engagement accelerator. And we connect affinity consumers with the best 
family businesses. So you've got great family businesses, you've got affinity customers out there who may not even know that their best option is a family business. So we connect them. That's the objective. It's not their fault that they don't know. It's not the business's fault that they don't know. You know, sometimes you're spending marketing dollars and you're competing with a $25 billion multinational conglomerate. That's a strong and powerful competitor. We want to level the playing field a bit so that those customers who would be fascinated by the family business option can connect to the family business. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Dale, you are a great interlocutor and moderator. So if ever you have a question, chime in because your question will inevitably shine light on the whole process. So jump in if you have a, an inquiry well, about us. We are a cause-driven marketing and technology company. Cause-driven is important. This is not about landing a monster payday. This is about us putting time, money, and effort into promoting something that we think is socially valuable, family businesses. We promote them and we aggregate communities around them, right? It starts with the website. It's built on social media engagement and I'll share some of that with you momentarily. Um, the tool of the trade is digital content marketing, something I have a background in. Advocacy, something that we have backgrounds in, which is hugely important, political advocacy, cultural advocacy, community-based advocacy, just getting the word out. But in addition to advocacy, which is hugely important, I believe that action is just as important as advocacy. Action, what tools are you giving people to take action, to act on the principles that you espouse in your advocacy? And then eventually what we'll be developing is an app. Sorry, go ahead. Let me ask you, because this is, this is, this is wonderful. I mean, this is so, it makes so much sense. Why is it you think nobody's done this before? Why are, you know, why is this just coming around now? That's just your sense there for the, for the audience. I'll tell you, Dale, I had the exact same question. And when we scanned and I scanned the marketplace and said, I love shop local. I love shop small. I love walking into a coffee shop and seeing the shop small sticker. And they have shop small weeks and days and shop local weeks and days. And those are great movements. And I don't think that there's any, Deliberate deficiency. It's just that it takes time. And what I think I saw was exactly what you're pointing out, which is why isn't there one of these? There needs to be one of these. There's a desire for it. And I think that the population at large, of course, knows about family businesses. There are some great organizations, you, who advocate for them and uh, host the amazing awards ceremony that I've been to last year. It was extraordinary. You are shining a light on those companies. And those companies are profoundly proud of the fact that they're family business. But I think that there's been that one small piece that's been missing, which is the, the kind of digital nexus, which ties it all together and makes it handy for those of us who like to shop using one of these things <laughs> and get our information using one of those things and understand what's possible. For example, imagine the scenario. And this is one of the things that occurred to me. I walked into a coffee shop and it was proudly part of Shop Local and Shop Small. And they were a family owned business and they're one of the best coffee shops in this particular city. I travel all the time. And I thought, Jiminy Crickets. Now, when I say Jiminy Crickets, that means a profound revelation is pending. I yeah, said, Jiminy yeah. Crickets. I said, Jiminy Crickets. I would love to be in this town or any of the towns that I visit as I travel almost nonstop. And I would love to know right now as I walk down the street, which shop is the family owned sub shop? Mm -hmm. Which coffee shop is the family owned coffee shop? I just wanted to know those things. And I didn't have a quick, readily available, instantaneous resource that could allow me to do that with this doodad. So I figured that's something that's needed. Does that make sense? It, it, it makes perfect sense. And so two, two points before, because this is, this is fascinating, but I think the audience needs to know, um, you know, how, how Christian and I met is that, that, you know, I was passionate about family businesses and I was thinking, well, this shop local, there should be a shop family. So I went, uh, to, you know, I go to GoDaddy to try to identify a website and I saw this shopfamily.org was taken. So I actually said, well, let me look at, let me look at who's the host. And in the host was, uh, was Christian's name and number. And I just, and this is, and I actually called him up, not expecting ever to hear, hear from him again. And then not only did we, he and I just have a great conversation, he ended up coming, he happened to be in New Jersey and came to our Family Business Awards a year ago. Yes. So that's when, we, that's when we first met. And so, so you say, well, who is this guy? Why is he talking? Well, he owns a very successful family business with his brothers and Soldier Fuel. We can talk more about that, but I just wanted to give your credentials. You're not just some guy popping in. 
you're living the family business life. And so, so it's important that, that they understand, but, but also it's important to have enough chutzpah to reach out to somebody yes. and we've become fast friends. And so we're, we're in this thing together. Absolutely right. And I should give that context. That's an absolutely good point, which is it pays to reach out. It's one of the things I admire about you is that you just made that contact. You just did it. And I operate the same way. Quick, small piece of context. Yes, I also care about family businesses because I have one. My brothers and I, we make an energy bar called Soldier Fuel. And it's a high performance energy bar for elite military units. It's used by militaries around the world, allies only allies only. Um, although we've had some funny requests from non-allied nations who, who inquire about what we're up to and how can they become a part of it. And I say, look, you're, you're very polite and very civil. I'm sorry, I, I can't sell your energy bars. <laughs> it's like a, that just wouldn't go over well. You tell them, become an ally, become, become an ally. An, exactly. I said, look, this should be motivation for you to become an ally. If you become an ally of the United States, I'll happily provide you energy bars for your soldiers. Exactly. The, um, but in the event, yeah, but in the event of a conflict, only our side could be eating them. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, at any rate, so no, and we take that very seriously, actually, because we're hardcore patriots. But, um, but yes, yeah, so my brothers and I have this business, and I understand all of the advantages of family businesses. I also understand the challenges of being a startup that is a family business. So I have uh, intellectual connection to it and deep emotional connection to it. And now, Dale, I think it's safe to say I have intellectual and emotional connection to you as well. Yep. Uh, so, right. So that's one of the reasons that I care about this space a great deal. I'll walk through some of these. I'm sure most of us are familiar with these fundamental precepts when it comes to family businesses. But one of the ones I love to point out always is that wouldn't you rather, or at least give a chance to, a business that has its name in the title or the good or the service. Why? Why do I say that? Not for boastful reasons or because it's about pride, but when a company has its family name in its offering or its service or its moniker, they care. That's a pretty good litmus test for the fact that they will care about that company. It's not some throwaway nine to five that they don't care about, it's something they care deeply about. So family businesses tend to have a lot of emotion and passion invested in what they do. That's a good indicator if you're looking for a quality product. Um, another reason we care about it is ethics. It's important socially and culturally, and Dale, you're a champion on this front. We know some of these stats uh, that a great many of our American businesses, our family businesses, in fact, the US Census Bureau has that stunning stat that 90% of businesses are family owned or controlled and that they account for half of the nation's employment. These are stunning things, most of us know those, but, it, but the population at large might not. Now it has a better shot at knowing it because of your work, Dale, quite frankly, but this is hugely important. They are a cultural mainstay. They are the backbone of the American economy that matters from an economic and cultural standpoint. Um, and, and why is there urgency with respect to making that connection I talked about with family businesses and customers? One, family businesses are being hit just as hard, if not harder, by COVID. So they have an urgent need to connect to customers and grow their business. Um, and also there is another phenomenon, if you look at this slide, which is the famous Facebook CPM, right? So CPM is cost per thousand. And when you're marketing on Facebook, everyone talks about CPM. Now I could debate whether that's the best metric for digital content or not, but it means cost per thousand to get a thousand impressions. What's it gonna cost you on Facebook? Well, look at the price. It's gone up steadily. It's always last year, it was hovering around seven, $8. And now this year in September, it's 12.59. So the price for that independent family business or small or local business, by the way, the price, the cost of reaching customers on this particular medium, Facebook, which isn't the only, but it's an important one because it represents Instagram as well. The cost is going up. It's getting harder and more expensive to reach customers. That is a real pressure point. Yep. Uh, real pressure point. I mean, do the, do the math on eight to 12. That's roughly what an increase of 50% at least. Um, that's a big, big impact on your bottom line. So there's a need to find efficient ways to connect to audiences. Um, okay, Kristen, the, the other thing that I, that, that I say is that, you know, when we, when we close down family businesses, everybody's unemployed. So in this, you know, in this, you know, in this pandemic, you know, they are hurt more than, than other businesses. And it's important as consumers, we recognize that. And, and that's why what you're doing is so important. You're, you're absolutely right, is that if a family business is shuttered, it's not, look, any loss of a job is 
is critically important and sad. But if a family business is shuttered, to your point, Dale, then two, three, four, five people in that same family unit are out of a job. So yeah, there's a disproportionately hard hit to family businesses when there is an unemployment activity or action. Um, so what do we do? I'm not gonna go through all of it, but I'll show some of the fundamentals. And, and one of the things we do is, as I mentioned before, digital content marketing, uh, enhanced engagement. We're an engagement accelerator. What does that mean? Everyone wants engagement and everyone claims that they get it. Um, I'm kind of very, very strict about what does engagement actually mean? I mean, that metric of CPM, Dale, I could, I could go on about that for an hour, but CPM, <laughs> cost per impressions, well, what does that really mean? You know, you can, I've had marketing entities say, hey, look, we've got this great CPM and we have, you know, a million impressions, but if you got a million impressions with an audience that isn't relevant or with an audience that doesn't engage or care, then who cares? Um, it isn't hyper effective and hyper efficient engagement unless you can prove that it is efficient engagement. And this is, I'm gonna walk through a couple of examples just to show you and get feedback by the way. On, I love feedback from you Dale and everybody else. I mean, you're involved in this so you get it, but I'd like to know what people think of this and our, our initial our initial ventures, our initial engagement campaigns have been pretty astonishing and I want to walk through some of them. So we, there's a, this is just one example. There's a garden center, right? Dale, it's a family owned business in Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I approached them and they're a kind of semi-legendary Northern Virginia family business, but they also want to expand. They want to reach customers more broadly. They have an online offering, so they aren't limited to just Northern Virginia, but even within Northern Virginia, they want to expand awareness. And so, as with everything I do, I start with what I call superior creative, right? You have to have creative that can compete in a massively clogged marketplace, right? Um, and I was a producer in Los Angeles and I made films and documentaries. That's one of my pieces of background as I'm a filmmaker. And whenever I work on films and I have a director of photography, a DP, a cameraman, I always ask them tough questions like, why are you making it that shot? Why are you framing it that way? Because I wanna know. I'm not a DP, but I wanna know why you're doing what you're doing. And the fundamentals, when you get them, it's interesting how powerful they are. And the next couple of slides will be an illustration of that. I'm not a professional photographer, but I snapped that photo. And there's a reason I snapped that photo at the Merrifield Garden Center. And if you look, I put it up, with an interesting tag, the ultimate family business. When you visit Merrifield Garden Center, not only will you encounter this cheery fellow, but you'll also encounter one of the 40 members of the founding family. Mm. They've got 40 family members there. Okay, wow. quick stat. Look at the number of engagements. Now that's engagements, that's likes, wows, loves, 918. Mm. Um, great comments, and that happened fast. Now I boosted it using my digital content marketing expertise and background, I've spent time in that space. And targeting, of course, is an art, right? Targeting people on social media. And this went to people who are specifically interested in gardening, right? Gardening, and that this didn't go to people who love Corvettes, because that's not relevant. You want folks who have the ability to, one, be interested, but two, engage with them, either digitally or locally. Um, and that's all specified. And that's the secret sauce. I don't give that away. Um, but great engagement. And then I, I make this next slide not to show off, but just as a point of comparison. Okay. And the next slide is this. So if you look at actual engagements, the Merrifield has a great Facebook page. This is the top post of the year so far mm. on Merrifield. And it's at 102. Wow. And that's, not, that's nice, that's good. It's neither good nor bad. But the one post I did for Merrifield was 918. Wow. That just shows that when you're focused and you have high quality, compelling visuals, not that that guy mowing his lawn isn't a high quality visual. I like that and I watched the video and enjoyed it. But this is about reaching people who, again, not just get the impression and ignore it. This is people who see it and respond to it. That's the one I care about is without engagement, I don't think it really counts because someone will say, see it and maybe remember, maybe not, but if they take the time, no kidding, to click and like and be interested and, and vote on it, that's a higher level of engagement. That's what's sought after in social media. Okay, another quick example. Um, there's a museum in Los Angeles called the Automobile Driving Museum. It's family owned, created by the Zimmerman family. Family run, family managed, multi-generational, I believe. And it's kind of a hidden gem. And I went in there 
and took a photo and approached them. And they were really excited about this actually. Uh, and these are cold calls in many cases. I just yeah, show yeah. up. Or you showed up, you showed up. Show up like, like you, like you do, Dale. And then I say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm running this experiment. Why don't you see if you like it? And then maybe we can move forward. And by the way, when I showed them this, they then said, hey, um, we just had our marketing budget refreshed. Please pitch me a business plan because oh, you're good okay. at this. Um, or, or not just I'm good at this. Shop family is the space where they want to be. It's, right. If you look right here, it's about, I'm not sure you can see my cursor, but it's about shopping family, oh. right? And so the viewer, the... The social media user on Instagram or, Instagram or Facebook says, wow, this is pretty cool. Shopping family, I get that. I didn't know it was a family business. And I love Packards. Yeah. So this was geared toward people who have a predilection for family business and Packards. Mm -hmm. Boom, a thousand likes really fast. 7,000 people reach. That's better than an engagement, by the way, for a digital metric. Impression can be, Dale, you can get three impressions in a day and they count those as impressions even though you're the same person right. whereas reach is only you only one time so a reach is a more specific more coveted metric reached a lot of people in that targeted demographic and by the way in a region that is southern california specific so they can actually go visit the museum right. and again not to be competitive but performance matters and the top rated post they have this year standalone post is at 123 engagements wow. Wow. Um, and, and the one I did is at a thousand, by the way, I mentioned that piece about background again, I'm not a professional photographer, but one director of photography who I, with whom I worked, who's really, really good. I've grilled him for years on what makes a great close up. No kidding. And the same metrics, the same pieces of craft that he uses in creating a film close up, I applied to that photo. Interesting. Interesting. The, and so, so that's a close up of a Packard and 1,000 Packard fans, look at that, 130 shares. Um, Packard fans got excited and they got excited about not just the Packard, but about, oh, there's this resource in Southern California that features a bunch of Packards. I didn't know that, Wow. right? That's key. So what, what's just happened? Um, family business with a great product, with jewels, treasures inside their four walls, connects with a targeted affinity-based audience that wants to know about what they have right? right wants to know that's the key thing one quick one more quickly great family bakery legendary family bakery in philadelphia iscrows to the quick post 527 engagements boom their top one this year is at two what 89 um and that's when they reopened um but again the visual here is very specific the visual is designed to well, look delicious. And quite frankly, it works because I want one of those right now. Um, so again, that kind of engagement, they then, some of these people, in addition to those social media engagement campaigns will say, what else? You know, we want to be associated with shop family. We want to be under that umbrella. Um, and what's great about it, Dale, is that, you know, branding matters. And because shop local and shop small exist, people, immediately, intuitively understand, ah, oh, shop family. Right. I get it. Um, I get, by the way, it's, it's so valuable, as you know, that we own the registered trademark shop family <laughs> because um, people have actually approached me about that in the last two months, which is great, but it's important because they get that. They're like, oh, it's advocacy. And it's not just advocacy. It's about not really maybe a cultural movement, but it's about cultural identity, like I want to identify with that organization, with that group, because it's about something good, it's about something I care about. And I just pull this particular additional campaign up because I thought it was really cool, uh, where it was, uh, I hatched this idea of in this great museum, this family created, family run museum, why not do social media campaigns or other kinds of marketing campaigns around this clustered idea of a gathering of gods and heroes, because the cars in there have the coolest hood ornaments <laughs> you've ever seen. <laughs> and most of them are deities of some kind or demigods. Uh, and that's what's great about this is that when that digital content marketing, that social media marketing campaign works and the business meaningfully connects with people who care, well, then the business says, this is good in this hyper competitive environment where CPMs and Facebook marketing costs and Instagram marketing costs have gone from $8 to 12 this year, mm -hmm. right? Base rate, essentially. 
Um, I need innovative, smart ways to reach out. And under the shop family umbrella is an exciting, dynamic, culturally significant and meaningful way to do this. I, I talk about engagement numbers, Dale, and you do too, and, and money and the significance of business. You have to do business. But for you, one of the reasons I love you is that you, like me, there's something else underlying all of this, which is the ethical dimension. You know, any good venture, I believe, has to have an ethical core. It's one of the reasons I love family businesses is because they oftentimes are rooted in a deep ethical core. This shop family has a deep ethical core. Boosting family businesses boosts the country. It boosts minority businesses. It boosts small businesses. It boosts local businesses, many of which are family. So it's not competitive to those things. It's an amplifier of those things. And that matters to me and it matters to you. Um, again, Dale, I'm doing my best not to make this a Dale Caldwell love fest because I could rhapsodize about you, but I won't because I just won't. I want to I take it easy on that score. But it's one of the reasons I like you because as I talk about this, even right now in this conversation, I've never presented this deck before, but even as I talk about it, Dale, it's interesting. I get more excited about what we're up to and what this is. It just fits. It makes so much sense, even as I talk about it right now. Um, and here's another interesting sidebar. And it's a global, I mean, this is, uh, Christian, this is a global movement. I mean, I think the pandemic, because of the pain that the pandemic is causing, people are starting to wake up and family businesses realize you can't do things the way you've always done them. Yeah. You need a shop family to be in your corner and they're more willing than ever. So the timing couldn't be, per, could be, be couldn't be better. And so- um, You're absolutely right, Dale. And here's one other thing, because this is ethically grounded, I will say this the cost when when one of these companies or other companies by the way not all the companies that promote are on our facebook page because oftentimes if you do an ad campaign it just lives on instagram or it just lives on facebook free floating sponsored it doesn't necessarily our post but these are ones that i can share because they're on our there are posts that we boosted but some of the other campaigns one of the things they love is that the value is extraordinary because this isn't a rapacious for-profit enterprise. In fact, 100% of shop family profits, 100% of shop family profits are plowed back into family business advocacy and family business charity, 100%. Um, that matters to them too, uh, as this ramps up. And what they care about also is, I talked about the cost of CPM and the cost of engagement because the images are better because the campaigns are better because shop family is a great brand. The cost is dramatically lower, which is important to us, to me, because I want it to be a great value for the family business. This isn't another marketing company showing up and saying, Hey, here's our standard rate card and it's going to cost you a pretty penny. This is about giving extraordinarily good value. Again, I don't want to reveal the numbers, but the cost per engagement that we get because the campaigns are designed correctly, the cost per engagement is astonishingly efficient. And that matters too. And it's just a fact of life. I want family businesses to get a better deal, point blank, right? Um, just like if I was selling a, an offering or, or making an offering to my brothers, I would want them to get the best deal. Same thing holds for family businesses at large. One quick point I wanted to make, and I elaborate on this, and it's fascinating. I elaborate on this in the keynote for the Family Business Awards that's coming up next week, as you know, Dale. But family businesses, of course, are also big businesses oftentimes. Yep. And what I like about this quick slide is that, put this up, and if you look over here, Dietz & Watson is a family business, but we all know Dietz & Watson. Dietz & Watson, um, this was in an early screenshot. It's gotten much more engagement since then. But Dietz & Watson loved it. Mm. Dietz and Watson got involved because they loved. You know, the community manager liked it, Katie liked it. Um, so it's not just the small family businesses that care about shop family, it's big as well. And, and that's it in a nutshell. There's much more I could talk about, but I don't want to bend your ear excessively. Um, and if you'd like to ask questions or chat a bit more, that's the overview of what it is. And again, reflecting on why it matters, it matters now more than ever because everybody needs good, smart tools to help them build back, to help them grow in a tough climate. Oftentimes, family businesses tend to be brick and mortar, right? 
A lot of family businesses are anchored in brick and mortar and brick and mortar has been hit very, very hard. That's why this idea of connecting people who do want to find a way to access a good local business, a good family business, connecting those two groups matters a great deal, especially in a climate where in many of the cases you just saw and in some of the other campaigns I'm running, the family business is brick and mortar, but guess what? In the, and you must know this, this is a fascinating insight, which I think we'll hear more about. A lot of brick and mortar businesses in the last six months mm -hmm. have shifted to takeout if they're restaurants, right? And in some cases, I'm learning, in fact, in many cases, with respect to family businesses, their receipts, their revenue has inched up even mm -hmm. because they've mastered, they've been forced to master the art of takeout. Now, if you have a viable, thriving, growing takeout business, it doesn't replace brick and mortar, but they've been able to survive, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a viable takeout, what do you want more than anything? You want an exciting, dynamic, engaging online presence, right? Because people are doing their shopping for takeout online. And that's one of the other advantages right now of the shop family movement is that it allows you, think about this, it allows you, you're sitting down, you wanna order food for your family and you're thinking, okay, I want to sort based on quality, right? I wanna sort based on highly rated businesses or highly rated Thai or highly rated takeout or whatever it is. But what if you could also sort by highly rated family businesses and you could get your takeout quickly identifying the ones that are family based businesses. I, I can't speak for the world. I can speak for myself when I say that's what I want to do. I want to know which family restaurant has takeout right here in this locality as I'm traveling or right here in my hometown. And that's what's coming. Well, and that's that's uh, so before we we uh, get off the side. So so this is Christian's contact information. So uh, I mean, this is a, an amazing, compelling case. Um, so 323-841-1365, Christian at storyfoundry.org and, and shopfamily.org. Everybody should go to shopfamily.org. So um, uh, Christian, if you wouldn't mind, could you uh, give me back uh, the host? I want to yes, invite Let me, let me a, stop sharing. A, a guest. And so you have to give it back to me because they... They don't allow you to take it back. You have to, you have to give it back. So if you, if you hover over my name and hit more, then you can make me the host. I'm going to bring in Tony Russo um, from the, the president, oh, thank you, the president of CIA and J. Um, and they have a family business, uh, a family business program. So Tony, I'm going to bring you in. Um, and uh, so, 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 so Christian, how do, you know, people are listening to this. How do they engage? What, what do they do? What's the next step? I'm a family business. I see this stuff. I have a restaurant. We're starting to open up. What, what, you know, we, we call shop family. What, what do we do? What's the next step? The companies contact me through shop family, through the phone number, the contact information on shopfamily.org. They discuss in a very focused, efficient way. We discuss what are your needs? What are your objectives? Whom do you want to reach? And then let's talk about solutions for making that happen. It's quite simple. I've got a background doing, let's call it corporate communications work for big fortune 500s, where you learn the art of fast, efficient dialogue, getting to the core objectives. The core objectives are, what are you trying to do? Let's think about that, refine it. And to whom are you trying to speak? That's what I care about. What are you trying to do? To whom are you trying to speak? And then how do we create something? Uh, bespoke, customized digital content marketing platform. How do we create something? It could be just one post, by the way, if you want a low cost entry. How do we create something that engages more dynamically than the average post? That's the essence. How do you, how do you engage in a crowded, hyper crowded marketplace where people are doing you know, this nonstop? How do you get them to stop, read, pay attention, engage, and share? That's the objective. And, and, and the important thing is that this is to support the family business movement. And, and this 100%. really is. And so this is not about a Christian making money. This is about you supporting yourself. So, so my, my hope is, I mean, my biggest fear is we're going to have to have a hundred people once we get going to really begin to do that. So, so By the way, I can tell you, I can tell you proudly how much I've paid myself in this venture. Zero dollars. 
the, zero dollars. I mean that zero dollars. All of the money is plowed right back into it. I've not paid myself a penny. And and, and it's a passion. And and so now, now now Tony Russo, who's a friend and a partner with this, they've created their own. They're really the only chamber that has their own family business program. So Tony, do you you have some questions for Christian? Yeah. First of all, Christian, uh, that was an excellent presentation. Thank you for being here. And Dale, thanks as always being a good partner. But uh, as Dale mentioned, we we actually started a family-owned business form because we realized that we represent about 900 different companies. A lot of them are generationally owned family businesses, construction to IT. And I guess the question that I have for you in, in your space, your perspective, right? You, you think of Walmart, that's a family owned business, but it's really corporate. So at what level do you see them crossing over into becoming more corporate than family owned? And is that something that you think a lot of your clients guard against? Yeah, so uh, are you asking about how does a company protect itself from becoming corporate or when does it stop being a family business? Right, exactly. I, I think in the case of Walmart, um, they have family members who are, I believe, chairman, but they're not the CEOs. They aren't the day-to-day -day operations. Um, and I have a lot of respect for what Sam Walton built. There's just no doubt about it. He built the juggernaut. Um, and I've been to their headquarters uh, meeting actually, we were, we were there last year meeting um, for another venture. So I respect what they've done, but that isn't really family run so much anymore. And for me, I've got nothing against a family business thriving and becoming big. I mean, I think a lot of small family businesses would love to become huge family businesses. But for me, shopping family, shop family is really about those that if, you, if they're big, that's great. And in the keynote that I give next week, I talk about some of those that have become huge, but they're still run. Their CEO is still a direct line to the founder. And the ones I talk about are unbroken lines. That's very important. So unbroken, multi-generational, family-led businesses. Those are the ones that I care deeply about. And I don't mean to exclude anybody else, but we can't right. solve all problems all the time. That's where I focus. And I think it answers your question. I care about... If it's huge, fine, but it's got to be multi-generational, direct line. Uh, and it's, yeah, so in many cases in the keynote next week, it's so juicy, I, I won't give it away. I want to save it for the keynote, but um, there are third generation, second generation CEOs, but they're the grandchildren of the founder. And why does that matter? Because they've literally been managing it day to day since the inception, which in some cases is 100 years ago. That, that's one way to kind of qualify it for me. Hmm. The, uh, yeah, I'll have to invite you back if you don't mind. Uh, I took down your contact information because I think, Dale, he'd be a great speaker for our forums as well. Oh, so, oh, great. Chris is amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah re really amazing. And, and he runs an amazing business of his own, a contract with the Navy for this you know, soldier fuel. And, and so but one of the things that I, I Christian, that I've learned in doing all these interviews on my TV show and stuff is that when kids grow up sweeping floors in a family business, they're much more likely to carry on because they value the business. When, it's a, when, when someone comes in with the silver spoon and starts out as a VP, it's almost inevitably not going to last. It's amazing how that pattern is. And so, so you know, we, we really, really want to make that point. Dale, I'll, that's a great point. Let me follow up on it quickly, which is, interestingly, and you may want to check my math on this, but many of the Waltons did exactly that. Mm -hmm. And I think Sam Walton actually made his kids mm -hmm. I've heard that. the floor in Walmarts so that they wouldn't lose sight. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm pretty sure that's true. But in the keynote next week, there are a couple of CEOs, one of whom is a billionaire, but he started in his outfit doing exactly that, working alongside everybody else for years. Because to your point, that's how you stay grounded. That's how you build the passion for it. That's how you understand it. That's how you have sympathy for the people that work there and understanding people who work there so that when you lead the whole operation, you aren't dismissive. You aren't capricious. You don't take them for granted. You say, wait a minute, I know what the people stocking the shelves are doing for 12 hours a day. I'm going to treat them right. And that makes a difference, right? It, it trickles down uh, effectively. It's kind of a positive trickle down economics in a way. So yes, there are companies that still do that. And, and I believe my son or daughter is going to start by, let's think of a job for him or her, making the energy bars on the floor and taste testing them. 
there you go. The, uh, um, and, and, and so, but, but, but part of our problem, so Tony and I, are, and Tony really is more, of, you know, really an advocate for, for businesses in, in Trenton and Washington. Um, but, but the thing I've, I've said, and you and I have talked about this, is that if every politician in America had to have made payroll, then this country would be very different. If, every, if everybody had to sweep the floors of their family businesses, then all parties would be very different and we would, they would be beating a path to really supporting shop family, to supporting shop small. And, and they, just, they, they just don't get it. And even now they just don't get it. And, and I don't know how we can, I mean, this should be the national initiative, you know, by both presidential campaigns. I'm not playing favorites by both and, and, I, it, it, and it really isn't, so. Um, You're absolutely right. And first, let me say, by the way, Tony, I admire what you do greatly. Um, you do the support work all day long. And in a way, you're an unsung hero. So I'm glad that Dale was helping shine a light on your work. It's really important. Oh, um, yeah. and, and groups like you are out there every day, advocating, pushing. You're the reason there's awareness at all. You know, you and Dale are the reason that there's awareness at all. And there's, pl and there's plenty of it. This is about, boom, you know, magnifying it, which, I, which we all want to do. Um, and I will say that, yes, you're right, Dale. If there were a way to make people better understand the nuts and bolts of the business, I mean, I always kind of, you're very kind and you praise me, but I always love to point out that, yes, um, we've had some success. There have been plenty, if not a disproportionate amount of setbacks, mm -hmm. of setbacks. And it's hugely important to have setbacks and challenges and understand the nuts and bolts of building from the ground up, of doing the fundamental work that makes a company run, not just being in a management suite. And I think that that's, pre that's precisely what you're getting at. There are too many politicians who are accustomed their entire lives to being in the management suite. Right. By the way, Congress is, a, is the ultimate management suite, right. Right? right? There are many grounded people in Congress, but it's a place that specializes, I believe, in detaching you from reality in many cases. Um, I mean, how many great Congress people have gone to DC, some people I know, and they were, you know, laborers, day laborers, farmers, and then DC, Changes you, it changes you. So the more, what's that? They come out millionaires as they well. They all come out millionaires. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I liked about your slides, Christian, is uh, you tell the story about the family-owned businesses. And the family-owned businesses that I talk to, a lot of times, they're not sure how to tell that story, right? Maybe they're reluctant, they're shy, they're, we don't want to be out front. And I think uh, I keep telling them, you want to tell your story because then that's how you're going to connect not only with the Trenton lawmakers, but potential clients and customers. So I don't know how you get them to come out. And, and uh, Tony, it's a profound point. And I didn't want this to be a sales pitch, so I didn't go through the whole deck. But one of the slides is the reason this works is that it is story driven digital content marketing. It's story. Everything I do is story foundry. My LLC, I, I, I write books and make documentaries too. It's called story Foundry LLC. It's about building everything based on story. You, you nailed it. And the way you stand out is story. Okay, that's great. What's the challenge? A lot of companies ask me, I love it. What you're saying makes perfect sense. You make documentaries. You know, you've gotten me to admit things about my business. I've never told anybody. It, it does sound interesting. Rule number one, the people who live the family business sometimes forget what's fascinating about it. As with anything, you can be talking to a friend. I just wrote a book about a friend who was in the Navy's tier one counter terror unit. And as I was talking to him to write the book with him about his story, there'd be moments where he'd say, yeah, I don't want to go on too long about this. That, that story is getting boring. I'd say, stop. That's the coolest story I've ever heard in my life. If I had one of those stories, I'd be telling it every night for the next 30 years. Point is, he's lived it. He's lived them all. So for him, it's normal. Um, and people, just because we're human, forget what's intriguing about our stories. And everyone has one. You don't have to be a Navy SEAL to have one. People in family businesses have them. And here's the, here's the trick. Once you've coaxed that out, we live in an attention deficit disorder age in many ways where even people who don't actually suffer from ADD uh, are trained to be that way by social media. So a challenge is, I have a great story. How do I get people to connect to it in a social media post, right? In a, in a Facebook post, an Instagram post. Okay, long 30 minute documentaries on Facebook are one way, but images can do it. And some of those examples I just showed you, 
and, and you're responding to this, I think, Tony, you can begin to entice people with the promise of the story or the fundamentals of the story in short bursts of copy. You can do it. Um, but you have to know how to do it. I mean, it's, I, I studied that in college and uh, trained, I've been training in that at the feet of apprentices my entire life in order to capture that. Because if you can tell the beginnings of a story and then hint at the promise of a deeper story, then you have people interested in you. I mean, emotionally interested in you. And here's the interesting thing. Big family businesses, just like small family businesses, oftentimes forget that. Big family businesses oftentimes forget to tell, I don't necessarily mean Walmart, I mean bigger family businesses, sometimes forget to tell that story because they think now that I'm bigger of a moderate size, I have to compete just like everybody else competes and they're not talking about family business. So I'll trust my marketing agency, which says go with this color scheme and this elegant palette and everything else, which can be great, but the family business story is essential. I agree, yeah. It, it really is. And, and Christian is, and again, he's very modest and, and embarrassed him. So he's, uh, you know, he didn't go to Princeton, my school, but he went to Harvard and Oxford. So he's, uh, he's very well educated and has done some amazing documentary films and, and has some social passion. Say a little about that, Christian, before we, uh, before we go. Just, yeah, well, yeah. Well, like I, like I said, I, this is a social passion for me, boosting family businesses. It's ethical. And, and one of the ways you learn about just how ethically important it is, no kidding, is by following Dale on social media and watching his interviews. And I mean that. I mean that. And, and Tony, I, I know the same is true of you. I'm just more deeply familiar with Dale's work. Dale is, a, Dale is a warrior out there every day on the front lines. And I mean that. It's really extraordinary. Um, and Dale has deep roots in social issues as well and doing right for this country from a ground up perspective. Again, not talking down to people, but building up from the bottom. So yes, I also have a passion for many social issues, but one of the ones I'm working on right now is uh, veteran suicide. Suicide in general, but veteran suicide. And I have a new venture called survivorcadres.com. And that's having some exciting things happening next week with big or big, think of the biggest political power center in the country. They might be coming on board to promote some of the work that we've been doing, which is important. Um, just because, again, that's pro, that's 100% pro bono, but you know, it all connects, right? It all connects because if you don't remember that there are certain foundational elements to our culture, like family business, veterans, people who are people who are forgotten and alone right now, there are veterans who feel isolated, there are civilians, neighbors who feel alone um, and isolated. If you don't, if you forget about those foundational elements in society, society crumbles. And so happily America, while we're obsessed with progress and being a billionaire and moving and, and sex appeal, while we're obsessed with those things, there are good people, two of them are on the screen with me right now, you two, who care about the foundational elements in culture, right? And I think that, thank God, a lot of Americans, not all, but a lot of Americans care about those foundational elements and dedicate big chunks of their lives to, to that. So it matters to me as well. I mean, I'm an Eagle Scout, so I've been trained since I was young to care first and foremost about community and giving back. So that's why we get along, I think, Dale. Yeah, well, that's, that's just a wonderful, uh, there's just a passion, veteran suicide. And, you know, we have our veterans launching ventures, so we've gotten, gotten deep into the space. But the challenge, I'll, I'll, Christian, again, I'm just hearing you talk and we had you on the show. And, you know, I, I've often, as I do the, the show, that, you know, Anthony Bourdain did this wonderful show about before he passed with about food and traveling we really need a shop family global show where we, we go to you go to Italy and, and talk to the family business, which are even bigger in Europe than they are in the United States. I just think the story, just the more I talk to people, the more they just didn't know. And they're fascinated by these stories. Dale, so you're should, absolutely right. There, there will be a show. Yeah. Watch us. Watch yeah, us. We'll, we'll do it. We'll and and, and yeah, we'll Tony, Tony, you're, you and Dale are the good looking ones on this call. So you'll be the hosts. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, but the, you know, one inch, I don't want to talk too much about all of this because I, it's, I'm passionate about it, as you can tell. But one of the things that I'm discovering, and you know this, Dale, and you know this, Tony, is that when you make that connection between the family business that knows it's a family business and the customer who didn't know, so often you hear, I didn't know that was a family business. What a cool story. 
Uh, I've seen it digitally online. I've seen it in person where if I'm visiting somebody, I'll talk to customers and say, did you know that right there, that's the founder, that's, no, that's the founder's grandson, that's the founder's son, and those are 20 of his cousins over there at Maryfield Garden Center. Customers are delighted. It's human nature, we care about these things. Immediately a customer thinks, oh, this terrific famous local gardening store is rooted deep in our community. I didn't know that. And the, you know, for lack of a better word, the delight factor is considerable. And that, by the way, speaks to your point, Dale, about doing a show at some point. There's a delight in discovering the story, Tony, to your point about story, the story and the roots that all these companies have. I mean, heck, there's kind of a delight for me when I learned that Sam Walton made his kids work on the factory floor, each of whom inherited $20 billion. <laughs> at right. I like that. I like that. I, I respect that. It, it doesn't make me love Walmart more necessarily, but I, it matters somehow because we're human, right? Well, well I, I always remember, you know, when they, when they have the list of the richest people in the world and Sam Walton died and, and like five, five of his heirs were in the top 10, you know, so, so it's like just inheriting that. They, but, but the thing I learned when, when I came up with the idea of this family, this uh, family business week, I would go in and we, we created these little uh, logos for them. And I would go in and talk to these family business and say, well, are you a family business? And, and they would light up and I'd talk about it and they'd give me a free pizza. Or so anyone out there, so if you go to a family business and you really celebrate them, because people don't know, people don't know, and they, they almost even just keep it, they don't say it. So we need to make that and influence that to be really a, an American standard, a global standard. And if you're a family business, be proud of it, let everybody know, and, 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 and really celebrate, celebrate yourself and celebrate other family businesses. So. And Dan, I, I tell our members to invite legislators into your company, tell them about your story, tell them your family owned, because it makes it real. And so, because a lot of times lawmakers are sitting in Trenton and they may think of a corporate entity and, and there's really not that uh, affection, but when they see that it's a family owned business and they started from scratch or third generation, it's going to be a lot harder to, you know, pass a bill that's going to impact that business. That's a yeah. great point. Connection. It's a connection. More than Stakes are higher. You know, Tony, you, you nailed it. And I actually want to hear your thoughts on this. Family businesses they can, and this is a curious word maybe, but they humanize things, right? Mm -hmm. um, the place that you go and you might know somebody there and you've been going there for a while, when you learn it's a family business, I've seen this happen and I'm sure you have as well, like you just said, for politicians, but also for customers, it can humanize the whole enterprise. Um, and that can happen remotely, digitally and in person, but that's what we want. We all want fundamentally human connection. And in the business world, what better way than to connect to a family business, right? And I have a question for you, Tony, since you are studied in this space and experience, and you've done a lot of great baseline work in this space, and you're one of the reasons we all know and are aware about family businesses at all. What do you find, other than that good point you made about story, how do we tell our stories as kind of a pressure point, a need? What's another big need? or pressure point or urgency that you sense maybe right now or over the last X years in the family business space? What do you hear people saying is the big need? Uh, I think they need a succession plan, right? I saw a lot of people that I've talked to, a lot of our family owned businesses and I've talked to our financial experts that come in and try to advise. They, they think that that second, third generation, you know, is really where the business is either gonna continue or it's gonna be sold, right? And so the need is they need to really pick the right team around themselves so that that third generation owner passes it off to the fourth generation. Because I, I said it on a presentation where they said by the time it gets to the third, fourth generation, that's when the company probably gets sold to a private equity firm. And, and so I think the need from a lot of the family owned businesses that I talk to is they really just wanna be equipped with the right team and the right approach and the right information to continue the legacy, right? Yeah. It, uh, you know, I'm sure that they all want to continue that down the path. So, uh, you know, that to me is their their biggest thing at this point is just getting the right information to continue the legacy. Well, that that's uh, unfortunately we're we're at time. These things go so so quick. And and Christian, I think we'll we'll probably have you back. Uh, Tony's with us every week, but just want to thank you for just an amazing presentation, amazing energy. 
And, um, um, you know, let's make something of this. Let's uh, not this be the start. We're going to do shop, shopfamily.org. Everybody needs to visit that site and tell their friends and family about that. And uh, let's make history together. So yes. uh, thank you all. And, um, and take care, everybody. Have a great, have a great weekend. Thank you, Dale. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Great job, Kristen.